let me ask you about any response that you may have gotten from from those that are from your same area, guys you grew up with. Um, sometimes people feel a certain kind of way when one of the homies steps out and you know does their own thing. Right. Um, what kind of responses from from that group of folks? Uh, I got a little bit of both. You know what I'm saying because. The stuff that I'm saying as far as like what I'm standing on, you know, a lot of people, they still want to, you know, they still want to harm each other, I guess I could say it like that. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? I'm just really trying to put everybody on the same page as far as like, you know, we all black, you know, we all being in jail. When we in jail, we all together, but niggas get out here and they be, they be acting like, I don't know. So, you know, that's really, that's really the responses that I've been getting as far as like, you know, a lot of niggas ain't feeling like, you know, of course niggas is like, fuck them niggas over there. And them niggas is probably like, fuck us. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, that's really what's going on. But for the most part, everybody feeling this shit. But, you know, you know how it go. And Can't please everybody. That's for sure. And since we did that last interview, you have since started a, a YouTube channel that's been, been growing lately. Yes, sir. Talk, yes, talk sir. Talk about uh, the decision you decided uh, that decision you made to decide to do that, and, and how the response been on that? Yeah, well, I made that decision to make that channel because a couple of years ago, the blacks had did something to the Mexicans, and, uh, you know, I felt like they was pacifying the Mexicans on, online, showing them DP and their homies. So I felt like I wanted to say something because I didn't agree with that, you know what I'm saying? Because they're not going to pacify us. They're not going to discipline theirs to try to, uh, you know, make the situation right or whatever. So I had a problem with that. And, uh, you know, everybody liked the video. And uh, I just like, fuck it, let me make me a channel and just see what it do. You know, I'm just going to be all authentic. You know what I'm saying? Natural off the hip with it. I ain't going to be, you know, I ain't on there trying to blow smoke up people's ass. I ain't on here trying to perpetrate like I'm some perfect nigga. I'm not perfect. You know what I'm saying? But I'm staying focused and I'm staying grounded. And I'm protecting my energy at all times. That's what I'm doing. Okay, so you mentioned DPs. Uh, that's a, a nice, interesting topic to talk about because um, in recent, in recent uh, incident, in recent, um, I guess a recent DP, uh, Six Mac from from the '50s got DP'd, and not only did he get DP'd, he decided to videotape himself showing his injuries. Um, what What do you think about? the DP itself, because oftentimes, sometimes people get over beat up. Sometimes people escape a DP. Sometimes right. people can talk themselves at a DP. What has been your experience in dealing with how the DP is administered from your section? Okay, well, you know, the DP is, is basically for, for somebody that did something they wasn't supposed to do as far as in the street code, the gang culture, whatever, whether it's you turning down a fade, you know, somebody asking you where you're from, you're saying you're not from nowhere, basically doing anything that go against the gang to make the hood look bad or make yourself look bad. Depending on what it is, you know, the DPs can vary. And it depends on whatever hood you're from. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of hoods, you know, they, they'll beat their homies damn near till they finna die. And some, some hoods are probably just lying their homies up. So it really depends on where you're from what the situation is and, 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 and the kind of individual you is. You know what I'm saying? DP, you know, I was a nigga that was calling DPs, like arranging DPs and all that for certain situations, but I would explain to the young homies why this is going on. See, that's the difference. You know, just, it's a lot of niggas just because they got that power, they'll call disciplinary action on people and get niggas out there whooped. You know what I'm saying? But with me, it's more like a, 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 a big brother, little brother type situation. You know, I, I got to let them know this is what's going on. You know, for that certain situation, it was because you put all of us in, in harm's way. You know what I'm saying? We could have all been hurt behind an action that you did. So that was the, that was the decision that, that I thought that was best. Like, he had to get out there and, and get DP. You know what I'm saying? With C-Max situation, it's a little bit of, it's, a, it's, it's, it's layers to that. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm from neighborhood Crip. I ain't from 5'5", five five, so I really can't really speak on they shit like that. But what I will say is, you know, anybody that's intelligent and got any type of width about they self, they, you know, they, they can see the forest from the trees and shit. You feel me? My thing is, treat them right, take care of them, build them up, 
and, you know, build y'all, like he say, increments. Build y'all money up and build y'all empire up. Don't try to tramp treat the homie. Don't try to use the homie. Don't do none of that. But you know what I'm saying? I'm just one nigga. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody is is fighting for this for this, for this this camera time and, and, and all that. But for, for what cause, though? Just to be noticeable? Just to be like, oh, I seen you? You know what I'm saying? So, you know... DPs can go very well, you know. It can go, it can go, it can go different ways and shit. You feel me? But he pulled up and did his thing. You know what I'm saying? His homies, they shouldn't have recorded them and let it get out. But you know, with, with this social media world, you don't, you don't even know if if if, 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 if shit is a, is a layup just to just to make it, you know, make the numbers go up and shit. You know what I'm saying? You don't know now. You, you don't know now, man. So um, you you said that. Um Oh, when it, when it comes to the DP, have you ever seen a person that was considered well respected, maybe an OG or someone that was, you know, really with their shit, actually end up getting DP? Someone uh, that maybe you looked up to, and then wow, this person's getting DP. Right. You know what? Uh, I can't really say that I have. <laughs> I can't really say that I have. What I can say is that people that look at look at like say me. If, so, if the niggas was saying they gonna DP me and all that, you think I'm finna let some niggas punch on me? Nigga, we finna shoot it out. You feel me? So, different niggas is, is different, different levels and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't, that's why you don't do nothing so you won't have to be in a situation to get disciplined and all that old shit. You don't, you, you don't tell on the nigga. You don't say you ain't from nowhere. You don't turn down no phase. You know what I'm saying? You don't, you don't try to fuck the homies' wives and, and you, don't, you, don't, you know what I'm saying? But everything has changed and flip flop. Everything is different now. You know what I'm saying? But nah, we don't play that. Niggas that's in my caliper and niggas that's like how you describe DP. Nigga, we about to turn this motherfucker up. Nigga, who you think I am? Is it because of a certain? Once you get to a certain age, you, you're. I you wouldn't even to... say a certain age. It's whoever that individual is. You know what I'm saying? If you feel like you gonna allow some niggas to whoop on you because they said you didn't do X Y Z. And you finna accept that? Now, if you did some fool for ass shit, like like you ran on the homie and shit, like the homies was fighting and you ran and shit, then come on, nigga, you gotta, you know, you know you did some bullshit. But if niggas trying to do the fake politic and on you and just be doing the bullshit, then you know we gotta go all the way. That's basically what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? You just ain't finna punch on me just because you feel like you wanna punch on me, y'all ten of y'all, twenty of y'all, whatever. No, nigga, we finna have a shootout right here. So how about when you were younger, maybe late teens, early twenties? I ain't never got DP. Hell no. Nah. Never in life. Tell <laughs> my mama on 40 crib. Never. <laughs> Shit, you crazy. Now have you ever called for someone else to get DP? Yeah, that's what I was just talking about. Yeah. I did that like probably like two or three times. You know what I'm saying? And and I don't take pride in that neither. Because my young niggas who 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 um who who that happened to you know, they know that I fuck with them and I love them the long way. And like I say, I explain to them why certain things is going on. You feel me? It ain't just, oh, I feel like I could do this and do all that. Because it's a lot of dudes from all different areas. They do that. You know, they will, manip they will manipulate their power and they reach. You feel me? As opposed to explaining to them. It's just like a child. When your child stick a knife in the, in the, in the, in the socket, you got to pop their ass and you got to explain to them, don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Don't pop them. Just because you mad and they running around being a kid, you know what I'm saying? You pulled the popping when they was trying to stick something in there. So that's what I mean. People switch up and they, you know, they ain't doing it. Select the politics, basically. You know what I'm saying? So what's your whole overall um, assessment of the DP? Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Uh, is it needed? Yeah, yeah. DP is always needed. You know what I'm saying? No matter if you're from a gang or not. Because as men, I feel like we're supposed to all be held to a certain accountable accountability, you know what I'm saying? Like, as a man, even even a, a, a woman, you know what I'm saying? Other women should hold women to a, a certain degree, too. You know, they want us to hold them to a certain degree, so if you a woman and you hanging with women that's doing stuff like keeping their kids away from the, from the, from the daddy or just doing stuff that they know that's, that they shouldn't be doing, then women should be checking her, just like the men, you feel me? Whether it's your family, your brothers, your cousins, your homies, Cause if, if I'm doing something I ain't got no business doing, I want a nigga to tell me like, boom, you know, you did some bullshit, bro. You know what I'm saying? Not just because you want to ridicule me, but because you love me and you telling me like, hey, bro, what is you doing? You feel me? 
So that, that's that's the disconnect right now. You know what I'm saying? That, that's what we that's what we missing out here because everybody trying to they trying to do everything else, get money, get likes, get views, and all that. You know, everything is just everything is just totally different. Like you don't even hear people talking about God no more, or you know, humbling themselves and growing up and maturing because everything is everything is about the bag. You know what I'm saying? We finna be the grandfathers and the grandparents. I'm 45. The grandmothers and grandparents, they looking different now. <laughs> they not looking like when I was younger. <laughs> you know, they young. They like, I ain't even got to walk with my gun out. You know, they doing all this stuff. So it's all different now, but we can't get sidetracked from what we still need to be passing on down to the generations coming after us because if we're not feeding them the minerals and the values and the, and the morals and how to take care of yourself, how to be a man, fight, stand up, a woman, stand up, how to fight to take care of yourself and all that, then we're going to be lost 20 years from now. We're going to be lost 20 years from now. For real. Some grandmothers is looking fine in their folks, huh? Man, they, come on now. Grandmothers were not looking like that. I'm 45, you know what I'm saying? I'm already a granddaddy, you know, so you got grandmothers that's 55, 51, 52. That's my generation, low key. You feel me? I'm like, what the hell? You know they walking around here twerking and all that. Like, come on now. You know what I'm saying? And I, I, I know it's, it's a time, it's a time to have fun and all that. But maybe I'm just old fashioned, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm old fashioned. Now so. you mentioned about the cameras being used. They shouldn't have DP, They shouldn't use the camera in uh, Crip Max. But I think that we're at a point now where. Everyone wants to record everything, but is that crossing the line? Should a DP be hood business and hood business only? I'm glad you asked that because um, this is the thing with social media, you know what I'm saying? And I'm going to break this down. You know what I'm saying? You got hood business, you got street business, or however you want to call it, hood politics, street politics, regular politics, Democrats and Republicans or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Or you got politics, like niggas at the round table, we politics. You know what I'm saying? Politicking don't necessarily got to mean bad thing. We could be, we could use networking, whatever word that, that suits this person to, to make them relax because motherfuckers be like, damn, you politicking? It don't got to always be bad. You feel me? But uh, hood politics is for the hood, right? But in 2022, you know, they got niggas on, on the internet, clubhouse, and different little different things, you know, and they, and they put hood business out there for the masses. So us as black people, we looking like a, a soap opera show. You know what I'm saying? Because we, we discussing behind closed doors, but on camera and in front of the whole world. You know what I'm saying? Now, that shit is not cool. You know what I'm saying? Whatever's going on be, behind the building, niggas fighting and doing whatever, that's their business. That's why, that's why we didn't see the other little issue with, with the mother dudes when they took care of their business and shit. But, you know, that's just the way it go. But everybody want to be... You know what I'm saying? Everybody, everybody want to get one up on everybody. You know what I'm saying? If, if I if I could put this dude down, that's gonna put me in the light. So that's what that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? Right now, you know what I'm saying? Everybody want to be the first to know, the first to to get the post and and all this old shit. You know what I'm saying? But disciplinary action and anything going on in the hood, that's supposed to be for the hood business. You know what I'm saying? But everything is everything is breaking down. All the pecking orders all over. No matter what, it start at the top. No matter how. My generation is on young generation. It start at the top, period. It's always gonna start at the top, period, point blank. However these dudes is going up here, however they conducted it, it's gonna trickle down at all times. That's just what it is. So if these niggas doing bullshit and they controlling these young niggas in their ear because these young niggas want to be seen as whatever type of individuals because they around these dudes, they gonna be hanging on every word that this this cat is saying, not knowing that this dude might not have no best interest in in. in it, not only in, 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 in their heart, or best interest for them, but for the hood. You know what I'm saying? See, it's a difference. You know what I'm saying? You got to have the best interest for the hood. Like, wherever hood you from, I want my homies to be successful. I want my homies to live. I want them to have money. I want them to be looking cool, have cars and all that. I don't want my homies to be dusty, getting into it, killing each other, killing enemies and all that. But... If you don't, if you don't love your hood and love your homies, you ain't gonna have that type of, uh, you ain't gonna have that that outlook as far as like, I want, I want me and my niggas looking fresh. I don't, I don't want my hood to pull up and we looking dusty, twenty niggas in one car and these niggas over here from another hood they looking fresh. No, but everybody different. You know what I'm saying? They for sale. 
You know what I'm saying? So that's 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 the difference between me and everybody else. This and this ain't just this ain't some new shit. I always been like this. Shit happened with the young homies and and niggas be trying to politic or do what they was calling me. They not calling them niggas. They not calling me like on some superhero shit. But they know that I'm I'm kind of like the I'm the moderator as far as like nigga. These niggas is young niggas and all that old shit. I ain't never been a bully type type nigga. You feel me? I always fight the bully. I'm the nigga that fight the bully. So should we have a rule against, um, should there be a, a citywide rule that, hey, when you DP in your homies, keep it off camera? I mean, you know, niggas gonna do what they wanna do. <laughs> Every hood gonna do what they wanna do, you know what I'm saying? This social media is, is, is at an all time high right now as far as the, the, the views and everything that whatever they feel like they looking and searching for, it's at an all time high. Niggas will do anything just to be in that limelight. You know what I'm saying? So, my you? shit, my only reason why my shit is not popping because I'm not, I'm, I'm not talking shit about everybody. I ain't got no controversy. My shit is growing authentic and naturally. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, I, I got into it with a couple of YouTubers and shit and, and well, behind closed door, them niggas like, oh man, I fuck with you because you ain't even come back at me. You ain't make videos. I'm like, nigga, I ain't got time to be Talking back and forth with a nigga on the internet, nigga, I don't know you. You ain't in L.A., you feel me? You in a whole nother state. Yeah. Boy, I look like Oregon with you and all that old shit. So one of the guys you're talking about is Charleston White. How did you guys get AKA into that? A.K.A. Newborn. How, how did you guys get into that little uh, debate, conflict? Um, well, I had been, been looking at this little channel and shit, you know what I'm saying, or whatever. You know, I always kind of like follow this channel, you know, some of the shit he was saying was cool, some of the shit was just outrageous, but he's just a nigga that, like, you just sit back and clown and laugh with and all that. That's how I took it, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, he was saying a lot of shit, being disrespectful and all that, so I'm like, I just had to say something, man, like, because this nigga just been disrespectful, disrespecting Nipsey, DMX, you know what I'm saying, uh, Bun B, disrespecting the Crips, the Bloods, L.A., and, and you know, I'm gonna say this right here, I'm on camera, man. All you states out there, man, I'm from California. We don't give a damn about no other state. Meaning we don't give a fuck like what state you from. That's not gonna make us trip on you because you from the state and all that. So y'all always concerned with us. Stop being concerned with California because we don't give a fuck about what state you from. You coming out here, you come out here, do what you do. We don't give a damn about none of that. Y'all so concerned with us and this damn social media shit got everything like, this division, we all the same. Ain't no one city, one state bigger, better than, you know what I'm saying? It's the same struggles, the same shit going on everywhere. Not just right here, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I just wanted to stipulate that or whatever. But, you know, uh, Charleston, he, he a hot mess. You know what I'm saying? He got on there disrespecting and, and added me on his live and stuff. And, uh, you know, we, he was on there, you know, talking about fuck ass bone, fuck ass bone from 40s. What the fuck is a 40? What the fuck is ass bone? And I was laughing. Cause it was hilarious to me, you know what I'm saying? But you know, behind closed doors, we talked, we chopped it up and he was like, you know, he respect me because I didn't, I didn't come back at him like making videos and shit like the rest of these dudes. But you know, he's still who he is and he's still there for shock value, you know what I'm saying? But my thing is, y'all can't hang on every word that everybody say, whether it's mine or the next motherfucker. Just because they saying it or whatever, that don't mean that shit is true. Only thing is true, it's been a black genocide going on since the beginning of time, and we've been out here losing, and it's time for us to get it together. That's the only thing that's true, period. So what's your overall uh, opinion of Charleston White, if you could just sum up how you feel about this dude? Uh, I feel like I feel like he bringing, he started a conversation that need to be started, but he need to learn how to uh, not really uh, tiptoe around shit he's saying, but he need to know what not to say, you know what I'm saying? Because you don't, you don't give respect and try to come to some conclusion f by starting off disrespectful. Regardless of however you feel or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Nigga, I'm a crip. Nigga, you, I'm not gonna let you be in front of me disrespecting me and all that because, because I'm not taking it as you disrespecting crips. I'm taking it as you disrespecting me now as a man because you're doing that in front of me and I feel like you're doing that on purpose. You know what I'm saying? So it's, 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 it's two different things. But, you know, I, I feel what he be saying, you know, he's he starting a lot of little controversy and all that, but he just need to pipe down a little bit because I feel like he got, he got a lot of, he got a lot of little pull that he can get started as far as all the blacks, if you really, for the black people, 
but he's not really for the black people. He's for Texas or probably himself or whatever, whatever. And that's and that's fine too. You know what I'm saying? That's fine too. Everybody, everybody trying to carve their own lane out and figure out what they're doing. So, you know, nigga ain't tripping. As long as he, as long as he uh put some respect on California and the Crips and Bloods, because you know, he he ain't gonna be he ain't gonna be able to operate like that and move around like that. I don't know why niggas feel like they can disrespect California. Even niggas out here that's from LA. Nigga, you you nigga, you can't you don't money don't mean nothing. You'll still get touched. For real. You cannot be out here playing in California, man, and disrespect people that's, you know, that's well loved all across the globe, especially out here in California. Now it seems like he's disrespected quite a few people that live right here in LA. Um, how would he have to move around LA if and when he ever decides to come to this city again? He gonna have to call me. <laughs> <laughs> Neighborhood, nigga. You, you can't come out here, nigga, unless you check in with me or Big U, nigga. Nigga, I said that first time, and I'm saying it again. I meant that. Nigga, that's to newborn, nigga. He ain't gonna be coming out here, nigga, going to, nigga, hopping out, going to get some A1 burgers or some Fat Daddies or, nigga, you know what I'm saying, nigga, uh, nigga some Roscoe's. Or, no, he ain't finna do that, not, with, not, with, not without having certain people with him. You know what I'm saying? You can't, you can't, that's just like me being totally disrespectful to somebody in a whole other state and then I'm out there on live like yeah, I'm out here and all that, man. Come on, man. The streets don't just stop right here in LA, man. That's what's wrong with people. The streets, they travel. They all over. They ain't just out here in California. The streets is all over the world. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, you can't come out here, nigga. You check in, nigga. With yeah. Big U, nigga, or me, nigga, on hood. Now, uh, back to the DP, I forgot to ask this question about what is it like in prison when DPs have to be done? Because it's not just about a hood. Like, on the streets, your hood DPs you. Right. But in prison, you know, politics is a little different. Right. It can, it can kind of depend on, like, where you at and, and what, uh, what's the situation. You know, because uh, I've been in, in Wayside in the county jail, and, uh, you know, uh, Something um, something happened with an individual. He was a blood, and uh, you know it was gonna cause a riot with the with the Mexicans. You know what I'm saying? And I had a little pull with the Mexicans, and they came and got at me. So I went and got at the Bloods. Like, hey, you know y'all better DP this nigga, or we gonna beat him up. You feel me? So you know it could be like that. You know what I'm saying? Or uh, or in prison. You know what I'm saying? Depending on what it is and shit, and it depends on. You know, like, 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 what kind of race you is? You know what I'm saying? Like, the Mexicans, you know, they DP, they, they people certain type of ways. Northanios, you know, they DP, they people certain type of way. It don't, it, it could be small shit. They bust on you, nigga. That's how they DP. So every, 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 every race and situation and gang is different. You know what I'm saying? If you somewhere and 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 your homies ain't ain't feeling like they finna take care of you. Another nigga, the other Crips or some of the blacks or something, they gonna get on you like if you in there for snitching or raping and all that and your homies, or you gay or something, and your homies feeling like they ain't, they ain't, you know what I'm saying, they ain't accepting that, they gonna get on you, or, you know what I'm saying, that's just how it go, you know what I'm saying, so certain situations is different. But the end result is always the same, as long as you learn not to do whatever you did the first time to be in that situation. Now, I saw on your, your channel, you talked about the whole Nipsey Hussle rumors that have been circulating lately. Uh, a lot of people are upset about it. It's certainly receiving a lot of attention on, on YouTube, Clubhouse. Right. Uh, what's your whole assessment of this situation? I just feel like uh, they need to let that man rest, man. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, they disrespectful, you know. Fuck, not fuck him or his homies and shit, but you know, this man got kids, this man got a, a mama. You know, he got a grandmama, you know what I'm saying? What about the family members that gotta, gotta hear this shit and see this shit? And that's the problem that I really be having, you know what I'm saying? Niggas get on this, on this YouTube and they say shit and do shit not realizing, nigga, you got a family just like the person you trying to speak on, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, you know people, need to, people need to pipe down and let that man rest, you know what I'm saying? If this, whatever this nigga did, that was this man's business. That was this man's business. That's what's wrong with everybody. You know, everybody's so consumed with everybody else's business. You know, it's 24 hours in the day. If you spend one hour thinking about me, then you wasted your day. 
worry about yourself. You know what I'm saying? That you know that's to whack 100, nigga. You know what I'm saying? So it won't be no no head in the ginger, nigga. That's to whack, nigga. Worry about yourself. You know what I'm saying? You speaking on on a homie to an outsider, nigga. That's from New York, the most craftiest nigga on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? And you talking freely and you talking bad about Big U. You know what I'm saying? But regardless if niggas feel like Big U a snake or whatever, Big U ain't saying nothing, nigga. He ain't out here promoting bullshit and, and putting the bullshit out there. You know what I'm saying? The universe. You speaking on Nip? Nip been dead almost two years, man. You you that obsessed with Nip? You still speaking on this man? Three years he been dead. Three years. You know what I'm saying? You that accept? Man, that's crazy, man. So, Wag 100, man. He he know he messed up. Nigga, you from LA. That's the crazy part. Nigga, you, you from the valley. You ain't from LA, but you from California. You know better. Nigga, you definitely ain't finna be walking around and operating out here like that. You know that. And I, I fuck with Wack because I like his business mind. You know what I'm saying? But that probably was the straw that broke the camel's back, man. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people ain't feeling that. You know, a lot of people love Nip. A lot of people. Nip is the reason why a lot of people is, is working and hustling and starting businesses and believing in themselves because of Nip. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. It's going to be real tricky, man. It's going to be real tricky, man, to see what happened, man. You know what I'm saying? So he like it. I love it. You know what I'm saying? That's what he want to do. Hey, you know. Hey, you think that Pillow talking to a out-of-stater on L.A. personal business is deserving of a DP? Well, he ain't going to fight nobody. He ain't going to show up and fight nobody. You know what I'm saying? Now, being in that type of uh, spotlight, like what he's shooting for, he know he shouldn't be talking like that. Because you're trying to be a podcast moderator. You know what I'm saying? You're a, you a, you a, you a manager. You're trying to be in that, in that limelight as far as like, you know, like a like a like the like the inquirer, like some like a Wendy type nigga, Wendy show type nigga. You know, you want to talk about gossip and shit. So he 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 either knew or he got to be the dumbest nigga in life, nigga. You sitting up there talking to this nigga and you're like this nigga ain't, you know what I'm saying? This nigga ain't recording. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, everything everything could be a plot. You know what I'm saying? Like like he knew. It, it, you know, we never know. You know what I'm saying? These dudes is weird nowadays, man. They do anything for the, for the clout. That's what they call it. You know what I'm saying? They do anything for the clout. But, you know, rest in peace, Nip, man. You already know, man. You know what I'm saying? We're going we gonna to always represent Nip. And we're going to hold Cuz down no matter what he did. Cuz, you know what I'm saying? That ain't nobody's business. Nigga, even if, nigga, everybody done something. That's what's wrong with everybody. You worried about everybody else? Nigga, put your roller decks down, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Put your shit out there, nigga. Whatever you did, nigga. You ain't just been walking around, skating around, just super 100. Whoever you is, everybody make mistakes. Now, do you subscribe to any of these conspiracy theories on how Nipsey was killed? Or do you just say that it was just basically regular well, stuff? Well, we, 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 know it was, we know it was from the inside, so that ain't no conspiracy theory. You know, we seen that on the camera. You know what I'm saying? We know that nigga is from over there, but as far as the reason why, I don't know. But shit, the nigga being from his hood, that's enough reason why right there. It don't it don't matter. It don't matter after that. You know, whenever somebody used to get killed or somebody like out in, in, in the streets, and nigga be like, who they saying did it? And they be like, wherever hood he from, if, if they if, if if they hood even be mentioning that they did, period. It ain't because it's. it's you know, you're not going to say that, regardless of whatever whatever happened. Then once that happened, then it's like, okay, now niggas trying to find out what happened, who's behind it, this and that and all that. But when somebody get killed, you don't, you know, they ain't going to say, oh, uh, his homies did or something. Ooh, they going to say, oh, these niggas did or we didn't know. You know what I'm saying? If they say your hood or something like that, then nine times out of ten, some it's got to be some truth to it. Well, there's a lot of people, like, buying into these cr crazy conspiracy theories on uh, why Nipsey Hussle was killed. And one of the reasons why is because they, because Eric Holder, the alleged shooter, has been in the county jail for three years. Right. Um, we have COVID that's delayed a lot of the cases. But I think people don't understand that you can sit in that county, Los Angeles County Jail, for, years. for a minute fighting right. a murder case. Right, for can years. You, can you explain to the people uh, how the L.A. County Jail and how the L.A. 
just to determine, you know, how they get down, how much time you might have to wait, how much time. Yeah, well, well, first of all, the LA County Jail was is, the LA County Jail is a monster. You know what I'm saying? So if you if you not with the business, you don't need to be doing nothing out here in these streets. L.A. County Jail is a monster. For real, for real. The prison ain't got nothing on L.A. County Jail. Period. Hands down. County Jail is a monster. So that's the first thing. But the way the system goes, like, you know, if you in there fighting the case, you know, if you're not finna, like, try to hurry up and have a trial. So you're going to be waving time. And you're going to be in there probably, like, three or four years just trying to, you know, trying to not only get your case right, but most niggas that know they probably going to do some time, they be trying to stay down here in L.A. as long as they can before they go up the way to the pen. You know what I'm saying? So it, it could be a little bit of both and shit, you know what I'm saying? But the system is rigged. You know, they take they take all day to, you know, especially if you ain't did nothing, they're going to take all day to get that right. But if you did something and they got you, they're going to be trying to speed it up to get you. So you just got to be smart and just wear it out. But you can be in the county. I was in there with somebody that was in there probably like six, seven years fighting a murder case. And I'm pretty sure it's people that have been in there longer than that. Because they're not in no rush to hurry up and get to the pen. Because they down here in L.A., they can still get visits from their family and still, you know, be in the midst of the little... Because L.A. County Jail, it, it's his own world. <laughs> it's like a whole nother world out there. Like, niggas go to the pen and be like, hey, man, hey, call me down to the county. Like, the county jail, it, it's his own world. Like, it's, it's a monster in there, boy. On the real, that shit ain't no joke, boy. You, I demand that shit ain't no joke. It's, it, it, I'm pretty sure it's the same, but the police, it's like, it was different back in the day. You know, they give a nigga flashlight treatment and kill your ass, beat you to death for nothing. Uh, I want to I wanna explain to the people what you meant by that, call me down to the county. For example, if, you are, if you're about to go on trial and, and you, you need a character witness, you can make up a reason why someone that's in Pelican Bay um, he's my character witness. Right. Speak on me. Right. But really, you just, he just needs to, he needs to get to the county. And get a little breathing. Right. For whatever reason. Right. Just want to get a little breathing. So if you want, if you're going on trial as Bone and you're like, you know what, I, I want my character witness to come say some stuff about me. You can just call anybody, any random anybody, person anybody, you want, anybody, and they can come down and, and, and they're gonna come down to the county and they're gonna be down there just chilling, trying to program and, and relax because they're away from. You know, way up, you know, because you got to keep in mind, prisons, they way up north, man. They be in the middle of the desert, nowhere. You got some prisons, it's like 180s. You know, you can't see nothing outside. You only can see up, you know. So it's like, you know, a, a lot of a lot of people that been in prison, they ain't even been outside past 430 in years. Past 430, they haven't been outside. They be in their cell because your recall be like 4, 430, 3 o'clock. So they ain't been outside like 5 o'clock. They don't even know what that night air and that night mist feel like. So, you know, people take the small things and, 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 and you know, they don't appreciate it, man. That's why I operate the way I do. Hey, I, always, I always thought that those prisons are way out in, in these desert areas. You know, I, I drop, when I take these long drives from California, I'm like, damn, they put a prison over here. It's like they put it in places that make it almost impossible to escape. Come on now, you ain't not, you around number dirt. Because even if you do escape the prison, there's nowhere to go, right? And the crazy part about it is like I think it's like 32 prisons in California. 32. The majority of them all up there. Donovan is down south. Ironwood is down south. Lancaster. Lancaster, you know what I'm saying? It's a few of them. You know, Chino, uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, Chakawala, a couple of them, man. You know, I've, I've been to Ironwood. I've been to uh, Wasco, I've been to Corcoran, I've been to New Delano 180, I've been to Pleasant Valley, I've been to Chino, I've been to Tehachapi. Um, Have yeah. you ever thought of escaping from one of these places? Every time I'm in that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> the hell? Not like I'm trying to like make a plan, but... Man, I'm always going to be looking, trying to get up out that motherfucker. Whether if it's in my mind or, you know, whatever. I'm always, hell no, shit. I'm always, man, fuck that. I'm always trying to get up out that motherfucker, man. Yeah, I remember I was visiting some, um, some family up in Tracy. And when I pulled up, they had a couple of dudes in the parking lot cleaning up. And I was like, wow, like, these guys could really get out of here if they wanted. But nah, they, they, were, they ain't gonna get away they though. They were short to the house, so yeah. I mean, even if they wanted to, 
it's not worth it at that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, when they short to the house, they ain't gonna do nothing to shit. But like at them little fire camps and them little open up little areas, oh man, be all the way live in that motherfucker, man. For real, I ain't never really been up in there. But I'm talking about like juvenile camps and all that. But they all designed the same. Cause they don't be policing, man. You know what I'm saying? They be having a nigga like me in the cell and shit. Feel me? Can't even do nothing. No program. For real. Okay, so I want to get back to uh, Eric Holder's in the county jail. A lot of people hit me up and say, how come nobody killed him yet? Right, Cause he ain't on the main line. He ain't on the main line. He's wearing yellow and blue. Explain yeah, that's like the you. medical ward. Explain to what that means and what these different colors in the county. When you yeah, see well, in certain colors, you already know where they at, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Up, up top. Up top. Yeah. Up top. See, for... For a gang member, we can't be putting on no blue and yellow, man. You know what I'm saying? That's that's saying, I ain't gonna lie, I've been to the Twin Towers before because I tried to play the crazy road. I was like way forever ago, like early 2000s and shit or whatever. But I had to get up out that motherfucker because there was niggas really in there. Them niggas was really crazy, throwing shit on the wall and all that. So I went to the main line. <laughs> but the main line is you in blues, man, county blues. You feel me? You turned up. And the blue and uh the blue and yellow. That's all the medical uh, dorm and the powder blue. That used to be like uh, for the homosexuals, but I think it's for the trustees now. I'm not sure. And uh, and then brown is for the hospital, and uh, and I think that's about it and shit. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, yeah, because you know they got the uh, the gay people. They they in a whole another area, and uh, the main line in a whole another area, and the people that's medical they in a whole another area. He over there trying to play the crazy role and take medicine. He over there in the Twin Towers. He ain't, he definitely ain't coming on the main line. But wherever he at, you know what I'm saying? Because the Twin Towers is like, uh, it's like cell living. So you only come out like, I think it's like 23 and 1. You only come out like one or two hours a day. You feel me? So if you come out like in the morning today, to use the phone, take a shower, do whatever you're going to do. Tomorrow you ain't going to come out till like the afternoon. You know what I'm saying? It rotating shit, and they only be letting like one cell out, maybe two cells. So, you know, he over there locked down and shit, going through whatever he going through and shit. Try to play, try trying to play on the system and all that, or whatever the upper elite, because we really don't know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we really don't know what's going on as far as like the people that's behind the scenes, as far as like if it was some conspiracy or some little crazy shit or whatever, whatever. So we don't know, but. If he got that blue and yellow on, then he in the medical ward for sure, for sure. And sometimes people do that just to get away from the main line, right? They're yeah. not really safe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, they could do it for that, to get away from the main line. They can get away from the main line because they don't want to deal with the bullshit. Or they could just be doing that because they know they got a serious case and they finna like just, they finna just like play this angle so they can, you know, uh, have a better chance at beating their case and shit. So it can vary. You can go from different things and shit, but... Hell no, nah. niggas is from gangs and all that, nigga. Bring that ass to the main line, nigga, for real. Now, sometimes they put um, high profile people like Suge Knight was in high power. Yeah. Um, even if Suge Knight wanted to go to the main line, the sheriffs, and correct me if I'm wrong, the sheriffs can say, no, you're going to high power. He ain't going to be able to do that. I mean, it's like when you're when you a certain type of individual, like a celebrity or uh, like a, a high profile type case. No matter what you say, they they gonna they gonna do what what they feel is best for you, and they gonna say for the jail and all that old shit. You know what I'm saying? Unless they wanna be assholes and just be like you throw them over there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, no matter what you unless you get a paid lawyer and had a paid lawyer fight and be like, hey man, I'm woo. But other than that, they sending your dog ass over there. Even if you try to PC up, they they don't even let you PC up. You gotta kind of like debrief or. You got to do some sick ass shit just to be able to uh, go to the PC ward. You know what I'm saying? So high, they, they make you go to high power if they want you to be in high power. Right? You're going to high power depending on depending on who you is and the kind of case. You know what I'm saying? I've been in high power. You know what I'm saying? So it don't it necessarily, sometimes it don't necessarily mean the case uh, that you have. It could be your record, what you what you know from in jail always doing, whether you're causing problems, always being the rise. You know what I'm saying? A hostile type uh Inmate, always getting into it with the police. Cause I was always going to the hole, getting into it with the police. You know what I'm saying? They had me like I was the shot caller, the blacks, all type of different little shit. You know what I'm saying? So, so I've been through all that type of shit or whatever. But yeah, yeah, that shit is just a cold game, man. But to all you young folks out there, man, if them niggas ain't telling y'all y'all need to stay out of jail, then them niggas lying to y'all, period. Any nigga that's in the street, he trying to get out the street, period.
You ain't trying to promote the street and stay in the street and keep doing that. Who want to do that? Like, that's stupid. Then you get cracked and go to jail. You in there talking about like, damn, man, I was doing good. I said, no, had that same energy right now. And that's what I'm doing. I'm keeping that same energy that I had in jail. I'm just bringing it to the streets. Minus all the little, because the only thing I'm not doing, I'm not putting the violence behind it. Because sad to say, that's the only thing niggas understand is violence. You know what I'm saying? But my voice and my words is going to be more powerful. Trust that. They're going to outlast everything. Now, what if Eric Holder was on the main line? He would definitely have to run a lot of fades. But with Fades? He, he would have already been dead. That's what I'm saying. Would his life be threatened, though? He already over with. If he's on the main line, we ain't even having this conversation. He already over with. He already gone. It's been like three years. He out of here already. It wasn't, he wouldn't even last a year. Not in, that, not in the county. Because you got to think. Now, Everybody loved Nip. That's my thing. Everybody loved Nip. Everybody he loved killed, Nip. He, he allegedly killed Nip. But everybody else is in there for killing somebody. Everybody else is in there for killing somebody. Yeah, but everybody don't know who you in there for killing. Right? That's true. <laughs> Feel me? We all, in, we all in there for whatever. You know what I'm saying? But niggas don't know. Now, could Eric Holder say, look, can he, can he stay this case? He said, look, we on some gangbanging shit. Everybody is a, is a man like everybody else. Nipsey's right. no different from right. the next man. Right, that's Why true. Why y'all pressing me so hard because of who I killed, allegedly? I'm going to say I'm gonna say this because when I heard that that happened and I heard that they said Nipsey got at him like, like you can't be around here, you're a snitch. When I heard that, I was like, come on now, Nip, you know you can't talk to no nigga like that. You got to be ready to kill that nigga right there if you don't got no black and white to back up what you saying. So in that aspect of the game or the street game or the policies or however, the culture, whatever, them are the rules. But, you know, like Nip say, ain't no rules because niggas threw the rules away. You know what I'm saying? But them are the rules. You can't approach a nigga that you saying is a snitch. And you don't have no valid black and white. You're not finna deal with it right there, Johnny, on the spot. Now, this man, he can do whatever he want to do to you now because you just approached him with some bullshit. It's just like in prison. If somebody come and say, Hey, yeah, this nigga, uh, this nigga snitching, like, to somebody right here. They gonna be like, they gonna be looking at this nigga for him to go take care of it. And if he don't, guess what? They gonna take care of both of y'all. You know what I'm saying? So that's just how it go. You know what I'm saying? But if, if that's, that's why when I heard that, I was like, I know Nip didn't get at him like that. Hell no, he's too sharp. He's too smart to be, to be saying, like, you can't, whatever. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, you had the audacity to let the nigga shimmy off and then come back. So, you know, it's a lot of different little shit or whatever, but, you know, I don't know. But you just it's just certain things that when you when you say it, be prepared to stand on it. And that's just what it is. Okay. That's just what it is. So on, on your channel, you've done uh, quite a few different videos. Uh, which, which one do you think has been the most controversial um, in terms of the feedback? Um... More controversial. Why do you call um, Charleston White newborn? Cause that's my little homie. Cause he 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 can't live without me. He always was, was talking about me on his videos, and he wanted to be down. He wanted to be a crip so bad. You know, he used to claim sixties from out there, but he wanted to be. He want to have that type of aura, that type of reputation of a nigga that's from the streets and all that. You know what I'm saying? But he can't, cause he, you know he can't stand up under it. You know what I'm saying? He. He already left it alone. You know, he was claiming that shit, then he stopped. So, nigga, you ain't got no loyalty anyway, nigga. You, you turned your back. You know what I'm saying? You, what I'm saying is, nigga, I'm from 40 Crip, nigga. What I'm saying is, nigga, I don't want to kill another nigga just because he got on red or orange or whatever. That's what I'm saying. That's not what everybody else is saying. That's what I'm saying. That's my movement. I was like that in jail, in prison, and I'm like that on the street, and I'm going to continue to push like that. You disrespect, then it's gonna be issues like that. That's just how that go. But you know, I'm still from Foley's. I'm a neighborhood crib. But I'm, I'm saying I don't want to kill no nigga that look like me no more. That's what I'm saying. You feel me? So, hey, that's what it is. Let's talk a little bit about the Foley's. You from the your hood has four main sections. Correct me if I'm wrong. Four main sections, and the section that you come up out of is called the dark side. Yeah, I'm from the dark side. And um, it's the unique. To me, it's the unique side of the, the, the hood. It's it's go it's the closest to going to the east side. Right. Right next to the Harbor 110 freeway. Right. 
They call us the ghetto part of the east, the, the ghetto part of the hood. One of the most notorious streets goes right through it, Figueroa. Right. And um, it is dark because of trees. Even in the daytime. <laughs> you got lots of trees on, on lots of on those blocks, like 40th Place, 41st. Right. So you go down those streets, you just hanging trees. Number of trees hanging in the middle of the street. Is that the reason why it's called the dark side? Uh, probably. Probably. It just, it just looked thirsty over there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Look thirsty over there in the daytime, night, especially at night. Oh do, my do god. Do we know who gave it that name? Uh not really, not really. Don't give me the line. I really don't know. <laughs> don't be don't give me the line. I really don't know. Is it possible to find out like who actually kicked off that name Dark Side? I, I wanna say my homie Big Smurf, but I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I, I called my one of my big homies and I asked him and see what he say, but yeah, you know, I wanna say my homie Big Smurf, but I'm not sure. And also there's a lot of rich history there too, because for a while, there was a lot of turnover of different people claiming that. Right. Now it seems to be solidified. That's Foley's. Right, right. That's a for period. Yeah. That ain't going nowhere. That's but it was Foley, Trey Hoover's. You had um, WD Crip was in there. WDC's. WDC's was there. Yeah. I think even Dirty Old Man was over yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. Only reason why they not there because they got into it with the homies and shit. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my nigga Willie. That's my nigga. Shout out to my nigga... Uh, concrete from 60s, that's my nigga. He's like, give me a shout out, huh? <laughs> Now, was it Dark Side before it was 40s or it became Dark Side after it became 40s? Uh, I would say it was 40s first, you know what I'm saying? Ancient Block, you know what I'm saying? The homies was really Ancient Block hustlers and then they turned into 40s and all that old shit, you know what I'm saying? But it was always Ancient Block and the homies was always there and all that old shit, you know what I'm saying? And when you was coming up, what was the relationship like between the Dark Side the park side, the western side, and the avenues. Those, those are basically the four areas of 40s. Right, all sides. Also, what's very unique about this hood, geographically, because I've looked at this on a map, it is the longest turf going from east to west. I know. From from the freeway to Lamert Park. From Flower to Crenshaw. Flower to Crenshaw. Right. Um, so these four areas pretty much fill in that whole stretch. Dark side, park side, western, ass. Right. Uh, what was the relationship like between those four sections when you was coming up? Because it's quite it's quite a distance from the dark side to the abs. Yeah, but it's the same thing though. You know what I'm saying? Like if you really if you really a soul baby, meaning like you a nigga that's really functioning all through the hood, you ain't looking at it like that. You know what I'm saying? Cause we like you said, we way over here on Fig, you know what I'm saying? We on the main line, that's Hoover. We call Hoover the main line. You know, we way over there, then we driving way over here, or walking way over here on 8th Ave, 6th Ave, 3rd Ave, you feel me? Western and Vernon. And, you know, we ain't looking at it like that because, you know, this the hood. So we hanging out with the homies and shit, you feel me? So we ain't looking at it like it's all spaced out. Like, you know, it's all, it's, 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 all, it's, we got all these different sides, but at the end of the day, it's just folks, period. But, you know, I've been around a long time to know that there's some people in the hood that just stay in their section. Right, that, 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 that goes on too. To move around. Right, that go on too. Yeah. It's still niggas from, from the hood, and I'm pretty sure from everywhere else, like niggas be like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Cause, cause, from the dark. Right, because yeah. they only stay on their side and shit. You know what I'm saying? Depending on who they is and shit. But but then you got to be a nigga that just move around. You know what I'm saying? If you if you, if you you looking at yourself and thinking about yourself like that, you're going to be a nigga that's going to know everybody in that motherfucker, even the niggas that don't ever come over here. You know what I'm saying? So it just depends on... How you how how serious you take your cripping or your blood or whatever it is you doing you know what I'm saying some niggas stay right here some niggas don't you know what I'm saying so I was a nigga that moved around all over that motherfucker all over L A everywhere you know what I'm saying so you now know. have you noticed that over the years Lemur Park which is on the half side has been slowly getting gentrified it's slowly becoming the black mecca of black consciousness right when you go to Lemur Park you don't think of gangs right. Uh, even though the 40s are around there. Yeah, well, you don't think of gangs if you're not from L.A. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because if you're from L.A., I don't give a fuck if you got 20 Israelites sitting right there talking that shit. Nigga, you ain't finna come over there with no H hat on, no red STL hat on, and be like, oh, this black conscious. No, you're gonna be like, no, nah, nigga, the 40s over here. That's true. That's true. But it is an area, though, that is rich in... In Black LA, right? You know, Lemur Park. Right. Uh, they got the arts. That the all place. that area, Baldwin Hills Theater, all that shit from Schoolyard Hood, from Pico, from Word on Wheels. That whole little, that little block is like, you know, what I'm saying, them little houses, uh, be on King, you know, in the back streets by Krispy Kreme, all that. All them houses, them is black people all up in there. You feel me? 
Yeah, they got some beautiful houses over Man. there in the Abs. Right. My favorite street is a street called West Side. It's right off of uh, King. It's a small street. You go down West Side, it's off of by Six Abs. Oh, you're talking about it's a street, by Six Abs. It's a street called West Side. West Side? West Side, yeah. Hey, don't crucify me to the homies, cuz you niggas from the abs. I don't know all you niggas side streets, man. It's a beautiful You know what I'm saying? I'm from the dark, man. You know what I'm saying? You get, get to talking about Menlo and all that. <laughs> Kansas, Dalton and all that. You know what I'm saying? But nah, it's a beautiful street over there with um nice homes. All the homes now are like pushing a million dollars a pop. They've been living there forever. You Whoever ever thought that a house over there in the hood would be worth a million dollars. I ain't even exaggerating. I know, I know you not. It's, it costs, it costs, it costs an arm and a leg to live in LA alone. So to have a house, you know what I'm saying? That's why you know, it take a village to raise, 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 raise a, ch a, a child, man. Because they charging us up out here, man. They charging us up out here. Rent is high. Everything is high, you know. Uh, they about to, they about to take the, uh, they about to take the little cooking oil or something. They were saying that they're gonna have a shortage on that. Now, now, West Side is actually 9th Ave turns into West Side Avenue. Oh, okay, okay, and it's okay. It's right off of King, and it's not too far from um, uh, Audubon. Oh yeah, you talking about down in them streets? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I always get lost in them streets down that way because all them streets be like this and shit. It's my favorite street over there, West Side. West that's Side crazy. Avenue. Yeah, that's crazy. And, and I... Almost every house on that block between King and 39th. Right. Looks oh, beautiful. yeah, you talking about going that way with the streets? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's where all the good houses at. All of them. All the good houses at. You know what I'm saying? And it's always been like that, kind of quiet and laid back. But one of the grimiest parts of the 40s, so the, uh, outside of the dark, because the dark does look grimy, but the corner of Western and Vernon is I was just going to say Western and Vernon. Western and Vernon. Oh, <laughs> Western. That corner right there is always cracking. Yeah. At least when I was coming up, it was like, man. It's like, still like that. It looked look like downtown. You don't want to catch a red light right there. No, nah, hell no, you don't. You don't. You don't want to get caught right there and they ain't supposed to be right there. You're going to be caught up. You know what I'm saying? But it's it's, it's like that. All, liquor store, it's like that all up and down, Vernon. And, and, and the reason why that corner is so active is because you got the little strip mall where people hang out. Then you got the liquor store on the other side. the Louisiana corner. Chicken. Then you got, got the Master Donut, Burgers. The Master, Master Burgers and Maggie's Donut. And yep. then the gas station. Yeah. So all four of those corners. And then you got the homie No Sense. He got a store right there on 46 and Western. The homie No Sense. Run and tell that. Go check his store out. Yep. Oh, God. Uh, the homie uh, the homie Runner and them, AD and them, they got their store. They got uh, they got they got In the Hood Entertainment. Go, go fuck with their clothes. This my shit right here, protect your energy, PYE, you know what I'm saying? So niggas is trying to do shit, man. Niggas got businesses trying to trying to change the game and elevate themselves, man. We ain't trying to be stagnated and still stuck because we've been lied to and our mind been twisted and, and rearranged, man, since day one. Now, it seems like in this business and in this hip hop and this rap, uh, the neighborhood crips have been quite successful. Um, right. Would you say that? They've right. pretty much... Everybody love the neighborhood. They created a lane, and I think they've pretty much been on the top for the, for the last decade or so. Yeah, everybody love neighborhoods, man. That's just what it is, man. I don't, you know what I'm saying? Everybody love neighborhoods. Our style, our flavor, you know what I'm saying? And that's just what it is. I don't know. Uh, so come sign up. Come sign up. You can try out for the team, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But some other, some other cars, some other sections feel like that they've been maybe pushed out. Uh, they, they can't create a lane in the Well, the homies, we've been blackballed. The Fodies been blackballed. Oh. You know what I'm saying? We're not in the industry like like everybody else is. We we scratching the surface right now. You know what I'm saying? We got different homies doing different shit and all that because, you know, we been blackballed. You know, the Fodies, y'all know we the sickest O's out here. Nigga, they know, nigga, we like barbarians for real. You know what I'm saying? So. We been black, but we ain't in the industry like that. Like I said, we got homies just scratching the door. You know what I'm saying? That's why every time I'm making videos, I'm always promoting my homies, saying my homies' names and all that. So, so my homies, that's, that's, that goes back to what I was saying earlier. I want my hood to be up. You know what I'm saying? I don't just want to be up by myself. You know what I'm saying? Because then, I mean, I got to take care of all you niggas. You know what I'm saying? I need all you niggas to bring y'all talent. Whatever you got to do. Pick up a broom. Pick up a camera. Nigga, nigga, do something, nigga. You know what I'm saying? You, so we can... Build this, build this, uh, 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 this money train to get it going. You know what I'm saying? I might not be here to see it get to where it need to be. You know what I'm saying? But I'm, I'm, I'm putting the foundation down right now. 
You know what I'm saying? Well, you could just say, in, in, you know, in the last decade, uh, you know, Nip being in the neighborhood, very successful. Crip Mac, he's in the neighborhood. He's he's going viral everywhere. You know? Right. Um, J Stone, another neighborhood. He's I think he's pr- pretty much at the top of the game when it comes to. J rap. Stone from where? From uh. From 60s? Yeah. Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. All them niggas is from there. Them niggas ain't from 40s. You know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, my homies, my homies got, my homies got talent. My homies is tight. My homies, you know what I'm saying? My homies, them niggas, man, I got homies, them niggas is, I'm telling you, man, them niggas was, had the mic in front of them, like on BT and all that, man, them niggas that had that shit rocking. Well, Crip Matt, he's from 5'5". He ain't from 40s, though. I know. You know what I'm saying? He's from 5'5". Five five. He was supposed to be from 40s, but he ain't. He's from 5'5". Five five. You know what I'm saying? It's, he got that Hoover Killer on his head because of my homie, Tiny Hardhead. You know what I'm saying? Not his homie from 5'5", five five, somebody from 60s. Tiny Hardhead from West Side Foley's. You feel me? So that's what that's about. You know what I'm saying? That's my homie. Like, a lot of niggas in the industry, they still are lingo. You know what I'm saying? They still are lingo. Uh, RJ, nigga, YG, you put my name in your, in your song, In the Hood, nigga, and I still need my money for that, nigga, for saying my name in your song, nigga, on Hood. But... They still are lingo and we don't get no type of no type of residuals for that. You know, they don't be like, oh yeah, the foldies or whatever, whatever. They still are lingo, all them niggas is. Now do you think it's a black ball or do you think that there's pressure on let's say for example, Nipsey makes it. He got at least ten homies just from his block that wanna get on. So how does he look if he goes puts on someone from the fifties, someone from the forties? Or just another day, he's got to look out for the guys on his block because then he'll get. No, I'm not. I'm not saying blackball like that. I'm saying blackball as far as the industry. You know what I'm saying? Because we can have all the talent right here, but you, the older homie, or somebody that know these niggas in the industry. You know what I'm saying? You can get us there. You feel me? Fuck if I'm hard and I'm rapping and all that. You, you out there already mingling. You know what I'm saying? And by by you not being from my section. You know what I'm saying? That shit is not gonna affect me what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna you gonna you gonna funnel out of dude like what what they did. Like how you know what I'm saying, like how his homies ended up getting on. You know, he's saying his homies they ain't like that's how them niggas got all that shit to go and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like niggas ain't niggas ain't you know what I'm saying, bring the homies in or Alright, who's the hottest rapper out the forties right now? Uh the hottest rapper out the forties. No lie. No lie, the hottest rapper. I would say uh, Baby Runner. All right, so Baby Runner, AD, and Super Low, and No Sense, which is H Crown Brother. Okay, Baby Runner, No Sense, Super Low, Super Low, and No Sense. I know all these guys actually. Exactly, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Okay, so here's the thing. Them niggas is talented, man. They playing. There ain't no reason why one of these guys shouldn't be on a song with J O Felony from San Diego Foes. Yeah, but J O Felony though. He, he, um, how can I say it? I don't think he was mature in handling his business in the industry. Meaning, he's somebody that's solidified already, stamped and certified in the industry, having hit songs, knowing people and all that, and he really from the streets. So whatever happened in the industry with him and all that to where he wasn't, he should, I think he should have, I felt like he should have put on his, his management hat. His A and R hat, like you from Foldies, nigga. You your homies from San Diego Foldies, and you out here fucking with the homies, nigga. Your juice card, knowing niggas, that's how we was supposed to get in. But for whatever reason, niggas do whatever they did. It worked out however it worked out, whatever. You know what I'm saying? The homies just kicking the door down right now. And my homie Blue Nose, my bad. The homie Blue Nose too. He from a whole nother state, but we got a few homies just doing their shit, man. But Baby Runner, Super Low, AD, and No Sense, guaranteed easy call right now. AD's the only one I don't know out of that, out of that group. Tiny AD, the homie X4, yeah. You always see him with Baby Runner. He, he be on the pictures with him. He the yellow nigga, a little skinny yellow nigga and shit. You know what I'm saying? No, I think that um, I'm going to reach out to J.O. Felony and say, hey, put one of these dudes on your next track. You know? Well, he, he, he know Baby Runner. He fuck with Baby Runner. He know Baby Runner. They know Baby Runner good. J.O. Felony know the homies. This nigga done been in the hood. He done came to the hood day and all that on 40 Crip. Cause I know the homies. But for whatever reason, you know, like I said, it's a business. I don't know that business part. So who, who, who knows how everything's set up, however it is. But all I know is my homies from the hood, them niggas got some slapping ass songs. And I ain't talking about just some bullshit. Shoot them up, bang, bang. Them niggas got some good shit. And the homie, uh, Tiny Cisco, but he going by Spody James on uh, Instagram. That nigga hard. He been hard. 
You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. But this our year right here. I'm saying it right here. This is the first time you heard it. 2023, nothing but number 23 is the whole year, nigga. Well, number Jordans. See, what do you want to see in 2023 for the hood? Uh, I want to see my homies somewhere on a big platform, man, performing, chasing their dreams, utilizing their talent like I've been telling them for years. You know what I'm saying? When we used to be hanging out in the hood and the trenches, I'm like, nigga, you need to be rapping. You need to be doing this. You know what I'm saying? Because I know you niggas got talent. You know what I'm saying? I'm a homie like that. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm pushing you, nigga. Go do your shit. Quit worrying about these niggas, man. You got talent. Go, go exercise your talent and take care of your family and your kids, man. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, when you're doing anything successful, whether you're working, stacking your money, you hustling, stacking your money, robbing, grinding your money, you got females giving you money, whatever you're doing, if you're doing anything that's going to elevate yourself or you're even looking like you're doing better than the next person, somebody's going to be mad. You know what I'm saying? They're going to feel like they, like, they, like, they own, like, they, like they owe some of that money that you've been out there hustling for. So self-preservation is a must, man. You know what I'm saying? Get your money, focus on yourself, like I said. It's 24 hours in the day. If you spend an hour thinking about me, then you wasting your time. Now you did a video uh, about Bosco and DW Flame. I guess they were supposed to box. They were supposed to fight. Uh, Bosco and DW Flame. What the? Oh yeah, they were supposed to fight. Yeah, they were supposed to fight. Yeah, but I guess it got cut off and got turned off and shit. I know Bosco. I know Bosco good. I know him from the streets and from prison. They be Bosco wanting me to beef with him. I'm like, nigga, I, don't, I know that nigga. Now when you're in prison with someone like Bosco, who's a blood, and you a crib. It's, it's all love still, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It don't matter. Long as I, I ain't gonna lie. Long as it ain't a nigga, long as it ain't a nigga from Hoover and shit. I ain't gonna yeah. lie. But it usually, it's it, for the most part, it's all love as far as on the black tip. But, but in our last interview, you did tell a story of being locked up with a Hoover. Yeah, that and I life. helped him. Yeah, yeah, I helped him. I helped him. I looked out for him. He owed some money and shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. That was actually like my first. Nigga from Hoover that I really like had a conversation with like verbatim, like, you know what I'm saying, regular shit, like my first time, you know what I'm saying, like just having a regular civilized conversation with somebody from that side and shit, you know what I'm saying? And that's why I get it. That's why I get it because I was like that. I had that, you know what I'm saying? And I, I get it. I know. I get it. I, I know. Niggas like, nigga, fuck them niggas bone. Niggas like, nigga, fuck them niggas. I get it. You know what I'm saying? You just got to grow mature, man. You know what I'm saying? One day you got to get tired. You can't keep going in and out of prison. You can't be and get shot. See, I'm a nigga that been in and out of prison, and I've been shot a gang of times. So maybe, you know what I'm saying? Maybe you niggas got to go through that. Maybe you niggas need some hot lead in your ass a couple of times. You know what I'm saying? Damn near from the die and shit. Then you be like, well, hold on. Let me, let me, let me, let me go back to the drawing board. <laughs> I missed the turn somewhere. You feel me? So I don't know. But maybe that's what niggas got to do, man. You know, but it's 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 all good, man. I just I just try to stay focused, man, and do what I do, man, and, and, and you know, put out this positive energy, and uh, you know, cause it's 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 easy to be mad, it's easy to be angry, but it's hard to be positive and try to uh, turn a positive uh, 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 from a negative situation. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to do that, but it's easy as hell to be mad. It's easy to down talk somebody and all that old shit, and that's that's the world we live in. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just showing my my authenticity being myself. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a follower. Never was a follower. I'm a king. I build kings. I don't need yes niggas around me. I need niggas to tell me, nigga, X, Y, Z, nigga, this is wrong, this, whatever, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't need no yes niggas around me. You know what I'm saying? So if you was on a prison yard and it was bloods and uh, all these different sets, would you actually make a request to say, hey, I fuck with all y'all, but... That Hoover dude can't be around me. Can you make a special request like that, or are they gonna look at you like? Nigga hey, said special got, request. We all, we, all got, <laughs> we all got enemies on this yard. You better suck it up. No, nah, well, you know what? Uh, ain't no such thing. Ain't no special request. You know what I'm saying? That's first and foremost. And if you felt like somebody uh, from the other side or something that couldn't be around you, you think it's gonna be looking at you like, why are you telling us? Like you. Go handle your wax. You know what I'm saying? But you do got to politic with your homies and shit because you don't want to just start no big ass melee and just go get off on a nigga that's an enemy and shit. So you do want to politic with your homies. Or you could just say, fuck it, I'm going to just get off on that nigga because he probably done something to you or whatever. But as far as on some gangbang shit, niggas ain't going to, niggas ain't going to really embrace that. You know what I'm saying? Like if a scrimmage happens, just based on some gangbang shit and a big ass melee happening, once we get to the hole, 
We're going to get discipline back there, you know what I'm saying? Because you got us all back here behind some gang banging shit. You know what I'm saying, nigga? Everybody on this yard is from a gang, nigga. That's the case. We'll be fighting every day. You know what I'm saying? So based on that, you will get, you, you'll have some problems, you know, after. That's where that term come in. I'm riding with the homie riding wrong, but afterwards, nigga, you did some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? So that's just how we go. Well, it's funny that, um, you know, you got a YouTube channel, uh, Bosco, he's pretty popular on Instagram. Like, you, you guys can actually say, oh yeah, we've been in prison together. Yeah, we have. Uh, I just ain't really linked up with him and really thought about that. I really wanted to, uh, I wanted to have him and Nina Boy on my show, because I know Nina Boy too, but I just like, I ain't gonna even, I ain't gonna touch it. Well, what about the whole idea of um, just having a fair squabble and then ending the beef? I'm with all that. You know, I, I said something like that on my page about two years ago. Like, if I had the power, I would be bringing niggas to the sports arena in the hood and niggas could line up and all that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm, with, I'm with all that. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's what we need. A lot of these niggas, a lot of these niggas need to get whooped. A lot of these niggas that these niggas looking up to, if they see them get whooped, them niggas gonna be like, damn, nigga, that nigga can't even fight. Not saying if you can't fight, you a buster, but nigga, you walking, you know, you, all this time you've been walking around here, nigga, you ain't gonna throw a rock at a glass house. So, yeah, that's what niggas need, man. They need to, they need to, they need to organize that and have more uh, open phase like that. You know what I'm saying? For niggas to get shit off their off their chest and shit, but not for the expense of a view or a like, man. You know what I'm saying? We out here, black man. We out here putting, we putting these bad images out here. We already got enough bad images out here already, man. So you know, somebody got to say something, right? Somebody got to conduct it different. Somebody got to carry it a certain way. Everybody, you can't just turn on YouTube and, and you look at 10 bloggers and they all saying the same shit, acting the same way, the same shit. Like, come on, man. That's, that's crazy, man. But that's, that's the times we're in right now. No doubt. Now, when you was in prison, uh, did you actually ever um, make a spread to eat yourself or did you just eat regular prison food or how did you... Shit, I had stole like a motherfucker. And I ate prison food. I'm a greedy nigga. You know what I'm saying? Because I used to work out all the time. You know, I was way bigger than this. I was a monster. Like, I really, I got shot. That shot four bodies off me, nigga. I was way big on my mama. Everybody who ever know, they already know, nigga, I was a monster. So I used to eat a lot. And, uh, yeah, I used to make spreads and shit. Niggas ain't in spread. Niggas ain't in there spread with other gangs and shit. I be seeing niggas on YouTube saying that shit. Like, nigga, we not doing that. Have you seen this? What is that? Hood commissary? Hood commissary. Where that's at? This is this is something that you could buy um, on uh, hoodcommissary.com, and it's supposed to be something that you would get in prison. What? Let me see now that tell shit. Me, tell me if um, I got to put my glasses on for that. <laughs> tell me if there, if you can make something good at that. Hood commissary. I heard that. Not the original spread box. Advertisement. Let me see. Oh, okay. Oh, this is the little care package. All right. Got the jalapenos. Got the hat in to put in the burrito. Wow. Got the little <laughs> bushy little honey bun. And he got the pickle. This motherfucker's sneaking crazy. He got the pickle. That's crazy. And he got crackers. I know that ain't no tuna pack in there. This nigga got the tuna pack and everything up here. Got to have these chili, nigga. Off top. Off, you know what I'm saying? And he got the uh, hot chips. That's crazy. Look at this. That tuna. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. This me right here? This a little off. This a little, I was gonna say a little off. This a motherfucking meal. This two meals. That's two meals in there? Well, no, I thought it was two soups. Nah, this one nice, this one nice little spread. What is this shit? Some cheese it's shit. Spread that, that's, um, oh, this nigga got the cheese and all that, but it ain't the real. You gotta have the jalapeno cheese squeeze though, the real shit. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna make me a bomb, right huh? That would be one meal. Yeah, that's one meal. One meal. Damn near, damn near two meals, depending on how you make it. You can make two sandwiches out of that soup. You know what I'm saying? Put the water in the soup and let it sit, then break it in half and put half on each sandwich. Put the season on there. All Cheese and shit. The hot water. That's all you need, right? I said, man. I said, man. You know what I'm saying? I just don't be on my channel doing that because I feel like, why a nigga want to be on this motherfucker show? You niggas how to make a spread and talk. You know, I probably tell motherfuckers different little stories from in prison and all that, but 
I understand. Uh, you don't speak about I underst- prison on your channel, do you? Huh? You, know, you don't really speak about prison. No, I don't. Because okay. I understand I understand influence. You know what I'm saying? I understand that. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if I'm not promoting it, the next motherfucker, they gonna, they, they, uh, they, they admiring that. You know what I'm saying? Like, they admiring that. Like, they, they, they might like my style, how I'm dressing. So they gonna hang on every word I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? So I'm aware that influence is real. So I really don't try to speak on prison because whoever on YouTube speaking on prison, they not speaking on actual stories that they did. They probably seen some shit or heard some shit. You know what I'm saying? Because the nigga that actually really did that shit, he ain't trying to relive that shit. I'm not trying to be on camera talking about, yeah, I was, uh, one time, nigga, it was for the go down, nigga, I was up in my cell, nigga, I had a knife, nigga, I had to put it in my ass and walk around in the cell so I can get used to it, because it was for the go down on the yard. That's a true story, but it's a whole lot to go through that, but I'm not finna be on there saying that, you know what I'm saying, because I had to be ready for combat, because it's a real war out there, like, niggas is getting stabbed, niggas is dying. I just feel like me saying, stay your ass away from that shit, that's enough, you know what I'm saying, because I'm not trying to paint the picture like we all on the, on the bus, going up there, you know what I'm saying? Because really, when we going through that process, niggas is not even like, niggas is laughing and clowning and, you know what I'm saying, catching the bus up there, we, you know, we, get, we finna go hit the line and, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and it shouldn't be that. You know what I'm saying, it shouldn't be that. Like, even when you go a gang of times, you up in that motherfucker, you're not even really tripping, you like, and it shouldn't be that. You should be feeling like disgusted, you should be feeling like, nigga, your life is over. You should be feeling like, nigga, let me out one more time, God, I'm not doing nothing. That's how you should be feeling. You shouldn't be feeling like, like, hey, bro, what's up, man? Niggas like, what happened? Like, Psh. nigga, you just got out. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we gotta, we gotta change the narrative, but that's what they promote. They promote prison. You know what I'm saying? But really, in actuality, um, like Nip say, ain't no rules. Niggas threw the rules away. You know what I'm saying? If, if I like you and I'm scared of you and I'm rocking with you, whatever you saying, that's what's going to go. But instead, instead of you noticing that, like I'm, I'm in awe of you, like I'm doing whatever you say, instead of you trying to boost me up like, nigga, no, you the same as me, you a king, Niggas to prey on that. You know what I'm saying? Go stab that nigga. Go do this. Go do that. Instead of you raising him and teaching him to be to stand on his own, to be strong and have a have his own mind, his own thought process. You know what I'm saying? And that's where that's where we at. Niggas not teaching these niggas that. And no matter what age you is, you could be an old dumb nigga. You just was a young dumb nigga at one point in time, and now you're an old dumb nigga. You know what I'm saying? So it don't mean nothing. You know what I'm saying? So you know we we gotta every day you gotta you gotta learn. Every day you gotta learn, and that's 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 what I, that's what my page represents. Niggas don't come on there talk shit on my page. I got a few little trolls, but all my comments and everybody they they fuck with me. They love me. You know what I'm saying? They mad they took my old uh, Instagram page and shit because I'm just not falling in that trap, man. I'm not doing none of that. Right. I don't even be on YouTube all the time. I work all the time. I don't got shit. That's why I be telling my fuck. I got a real life, nigga. I gotta go get on the clock. Nigga. I gotta pay real bills. Last question I want to ask you about is, what do you think about all of these gang channels that have been popping up? It seems like there's a new gang channel every week right. on YouTube. I think there's at least 30 Niggas channels. is making channels off other people's content. Yeah, that's... Like, we posting they shit on they shit, and they had a little, they face in the square talking like... <laughs> I'll be like, nigga, you ain't even did nothing but however you do that little shit. Reaction videos. Okay, what well, shit? Hello? What the fuck? I need to do that then. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, it's actually legal if you're doing it. You can take someone else's content, add your content to it, and it becomes new content. You can't just upload somebody's thing. That's stealing. Right. But you can take someone's thing, add something to it, and then upload it. Boom. They're killing me with that, man, because that's all they do. And everything is about reaction video. Don't but. make it easy, though, if that's what you do. You do reactions. You don't, all you got to do is find somebody else's content. And well, I ain't going to lie. I don't know how to do it, like set the little shit up and right. shit. He, he just you know, I already know. I can step in your office and all that. Yeah, so. yeah, but uh, as far as the uh, all the gang channels, uh, I just feel like, uh, like, like I said, everybody want to be in front of the spotlight. Everybody want to be in front of the spotlight. You know, you got the boy shot by Manzo. He always be in everybody's hood. He ain't in the hood. He ain't in the forties, though. Nigga, you know, and that's another thing. You, these dudes is not really in. They not in like neighborhood sets, man. They in these other games and shit. You know what I'm saying? We don't play neighborhoods. We do not play. That's why it's kind of crazy to see certain niggas that be on here 
you know, dissing and all that because we don't get down like that. We kind of hold ours to a higher standard. You know what I'm saying? Of course, you might see a few young niggas on here dissing or doing whatever, but for the most part, we ain't going to be on here like saying, oh, fuck, whatever. Woo, woo, woo. No, we don't get down like that. You know what I'm saying? We we got a certain stature about ourselves or whatever. The whole the whole Nate Bull card, not just the 40s, everybody from the Nate Bull card. You feel me? But uh, niggas is doing them gangbanging channels. You niggas is helping the police. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You niggas is helping the police, man. You know what I'm saying? And you helping niggas, they ops or whatever they call it, enemies. Like, oh, yeah, them niggas be over there by that brown building, man, with the gate over there. Ooh, like, come on, bro. Like, come on, man. If you want to do some interviews and all that, man, y'all can go in the backyard. Y'all can go in the house. Y'all can do all that. That's why when we went in the hood, we still was like smack dab in that motherfucker. But I was like, we're going to go right here. But it still was thirsty. And then when we went on the other side, homies start rolling by. I'm like, damn, niggas hopping out. So it's like anywhere in, in any area where it's a gang populated area, you know, it's going to be activities going on. So if you're trying to take care of business, you know, you just got to be in the right place in the right areas. You know what I'm saying? You don't got to be on the block to show like, like that's what niggas be, they, that's, that's what they looking for. You know what I'm saying? They, they, you know. If you my age still trying to prove that you, you know, that you in the streets or you banging, you didn't do it when you was young, man. And I'm looking like you stupid. I'm 45 years old. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and, and it's still shit that I need to work on, but I'm not running around here like, like I'm, I'm Billy the Kid and, and finna go across Vernon and look for some enemies and kill some niggas. No. But you got old niggas like that from everywhere and shit. And that's where the problem come in at because young niggas don't know. They get caught up. Go to juvenile hall, nigga, they getting tried. I got trials in the dark. And that's a, a lot of these niggas, these niggas ain't been through that. A lot of these niggas ain't been trials in no dark. Nigga, I was in the county jail 17, nigga, with adults. You feel me? So a lot of these dudes, older homies too, they ain't really been, just because you been in prison don't mean nothing. I mean, you niggas done been on level twos and shit. CRC and, and CMC and all that. Nigga, them niggas, nigga, that's cakewalk. Jail is jail, but niggas that been in prison, they know what I'm saying, nigga. Nigga, stop it. Nigga don't want to hear that, nigga. Nigga, you walk in. Nigga, the county jail is, 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 is worse than prisons that you niggas talking about you been through. Nigga, knock it off. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, but it, 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 it's just a cold game now, man. Everything is different. You now, know? when you was, when you got on 40s, um, that was right before the beef with the third, right? Right before or was it just Before, started? Right, yeah. it was before. Yeah. So you saw yeah, the homies, they homies, the homies had problems with them niggas like probably like 2000 or something. I thought, I thought it was from 96 to 2006, like 10 year beef, right? You said who? From 96 to 2006. Well, them be, them like different little shits in between and shit, you know what I'm saying? Because back then, that's when they was having the King Parade. You know, I was part of that shit when the King Parade used to come to Vermont. And I was part of that shit when we towed that motherfucker up. We had a big ass rumble with the 30s right there on King and Vermont. They all know that was me in that 22 jersey. What they know. That? And that Emmett Smith jersey, that was me. What year was that? Uh, that was the last year it came to Vermont. Probably like, maybe, I want to say, uh, I want to say like, I want to say 94, because I had got shot and I was, uh, I had a cane and shit. So it had to be like 94. It had to be like 94. At that time, was the beef official with the Harlems? or No, nah, it was just like squabbles and shit. You know what I'm saying? Little scrimmages and all that. But when they, uh, you know, they killed the homie uh, Murdoch, and then they shot the homie uh, Four Extras, man. They paralyzed the homie Four Extras, man. Right there on King and shit, man. And, and, but I was in prison when all that shit was going on. But uh, when that shit happened, it was just going all the way up and shit. Niggas was... Yeah, when, when the homie got paralyzed, that's really what kicked it off. Yeah. You, so you was in jail when that happened? Yeah, I was in jail. Okay. Yeah, I was in prison, man. Got homie four extras, uh, big four extras, got paralyzed. Yeah, just got put on the hood, too. Brand new from the hood and got paralyzed, cuz. And that's a good homie right there, too. You know what I'm saying? The size. It's always been like that, you know what I'm saying? Like, with you know, with the homies in the thirds, different little discrepancies and shit. You know, I went to Manual and all that with them niggas. You know, I lived I lived on 30 side. I just hung out with the homies. Yeah, you was right, was that 39? Huh? You looked on, well, you on looked, Brownie? Oh, Brownie, yeah. Right where by 39. Yep. 39 around the corner. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so um, let's wrap this up. S-Bone, um, final thoughts before we close it out. 
Uh, I just want to uh, send my love out to everybody that's uh, watching this video. Uh, special shout out to everybody in LA. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the neighborhoods, the Crips, the Bloods, the Hoovers, the Trays, the Pyros, and everybody. You know what I'm saying? Even the Hoovers. Shout out to the Hoovers, everybody. You know what I'm saying? Hey, That's don't know nigga run me, and don't know nigga dictate me, and any nigga that know me already know, nigga. Nigga, I'll do something to you, so just worry about you. Don't worry about me. Now, we need more of that, though. We need more unity in this city. Niggas is scary. You know what I'm saying? And it ain't, I ain't saying scary like scared. I mean scared because they don't know what the next motherfucker gonna think about them. You know what I'm saying? Don't no nigga wanna go kill no niggas. That's the case. We'll be hearing sirens right now. Nigga. Yeah. You niggas gangbang part-time. Like, you know, like, I didn't know that. I thought gangbang was every day. You niggas just like, you niggas like work two days and be be banging for three days, and then off on the weekends. And I don't know how that go. That's some new shit. You know what I'm saying? We used to, we used to bang 364 days a year at New Year's Eve. That's why I never come out. I, even right now today, I stay in the house because I've always said the niggas that don't do nothing through the whole year, this is day one day they get to go shoot a gun and act tough on New Year's Eve. I still operate like that right now today because I was active 364 days a year if I was on the street. You know what I'm saying? But the good old days, you know, oh yeah, I'm, I'm working on, I still got my book that I'm working on. It's called the beginning of the end. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's going to be a couple of parts. It's going to be about my life, my autobiography. It's going to be about everything, the politics. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be all facts. And... Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be good. And if somebody wants to grab one of those hoodies, P Y E, how do they get in touch with you? Just hit me up on Instagram at S Bone Dark Official, or you can follow me S Bone Curbside TV YouTube. Fuck with me, you know what I'm saying? They come all different different shapes, sizes. Protect your energy. I don't got my other one on with all the color hearts and shit, but I'm explaining that why I'm on this camera because I got the hearts on there. I got the blue heart, I got the red heart, I got the orange heart, and I got the uh, black heart. The blue heart is because obviously I'm a Crip. I grew up in the Crip area. The red heart is for the bloods because obviously you grew up in the blood territory and the orange heart is for the people that grew up in the Hoover hood. The black heart is because at the end of the day, we black, you know what I'm saying? We was black before we moved to all these different little areas and got brainwashed with all these different colors and codes and all that other shit. So at the end of the day, we black. So when you see the four hearts on my hoodie or, or, or the t-shirts, that's what it signifies. The blue heart is for Crips, the red heart is for Bloods, the orange heart is for Hoovers, and the black heart is for Blacks. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, we black. You niggas go to jail, you niggas black. So you niggas need to stop playing. And don't believe the hype, man. You know what I'm saying? Everything ain't cracked up what it's, what it's, what it's supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to everybody. Uh, fuck with me, s -bone Dark Official on Instagram. Go follow that page. s -bone Curbside TV on YouTube. And uh, yeah, good looking out to my boy Alex, man, for fucking with me, man. You know what I'm saying? For sure, man. Make sure you take a picture with that hoodie, man. No doubt. Anytime you, <laughs> want, anytime you want to come through, S-Bone is always welcome. Wes.